Hi, I'm Nick Rummel with Caterpillar Preventive Maintenance. Today I wanted to talk to you about the daily walk around safety inspections. Now these are available on safety.cat.com and your operator should be performing these before he starts up the machine for work every day. Now this goes in order. Uh, it actually has us walk around the machine from the ground, then it's got a section on engine compartment uh, on the machine and outside of the cab, and then finally inside the cab, and it's a whole list of things that we should be checking. Now, we're not gonna exactly go in the same order. It doesn't matter what order you go in as long as you check all these pieces. Now what we're gonna look for, especially in the bucket and the ground engaging tools, is, is the condition of our cutting edge and the hardware that attaches the cutting edge. We also wanna make sure that our corner guards are in place and our edge uh, corner bits are also in place and in good shape. Now this is a straight bucket, so we don't have any teeth on this bucket. <clears throat> but if we did have teeth, we'd be looking at our adapters, our pins, and the bucket teeth as well. Now following the list and walking around to this side of the machine, we're gonna make sure we inspect all the, all the linkage very, very well. We wanna make sure that there's no pins that are seized. We wanna make sure that our, all of our grease certs and grease lines are in place. And we wanna make sure that this machine is ready for operation. As you can see down here, we found a seized pin. Now it broke the flag off that pin, which means that that pin is actually seized in the boom. Uh, not a good thing. We don't wanna run this machine today. Uh, it's gonna to cause too much damage. That's an indication on this sheet when you should put that machine down and come up with another machine or schedule something else for this operator to do. As we continue to walk around the machine, we're gonna look at the tires we're looking for cuts, gouges, uh, foreign material, rebar maybe inside the tire, anything that could cause it damage. We also want to make sure that they're fully inflated. We look at our final drive and the wheel bolts. We want to make sure all of our bolts that hold our wheel and tire on are, are tight. We also want to make sure that our final drive isn't leaking. As we continue to walk, we're going to get into the hitch area. Now we have this machine turned a little bit just so we can see a little better inside the hitch area. We wanna make sure that none of these hoses are rubbing, none of the wiring harnesses. We also wanna take a look at our steering cylinder and our hitch pins. We wanna grease those as necessary as indicated by your operation and maintenance manual. This is also where we'd check the transmission oil. So that would, we would do that right now too. Now we do have a little leak on this transmission. It's not bad enough to shut the machine down today but we'll definitely make a note of it and fix it the next time we down this machine for maintenance. We want to take a look at our fuel tank, <clears throat> make sure that the fuel tank isn't, isn't dented, leaking. We uh, want to make sure that our cap is in place and uh, snug and tight. We also want to look at our safety equipment, the handrails, hand guards, and our steps. We want to make sure that our steps are in good shape. As you can see, this one right here, we've actually, some of this is uh, rubber is broken. Now, again, it's not a, not a hazard necessarily for today, but it does mean that it's prone to failure. This should be replaced very soon. Again, with the back tire, same thing. Cuts, gouges, foreign material, foreign objects in the tire, uh, wheel bolts at the same time, also the final drive. We're gonna continue back to the engine compartment. What we're looking for back here is, are any types of leaks and anything abnormal? Uh, it could be leaking engine oil. Uh, we also have coolers on here. It could be leaking hydraulic oil, transmission oil. It depends on the application. But not only oil leaks, we also want to look for coolant leaks and intake and exhaust leaks. You know, an exhaust leak can create some low power issues. And the last thing you want is this machine not performing the way you think it should. So again, we want to do a, a good once over of the engine, make sure everything looks like it's in place. <clears throat> One thing I also noticed from the ground level is I had the hydraulic tank up there. The hydraulic tank is actually low. You can see the two black lines, and then you can also see that the hydraulic oil is lower than the bottom black line. We should really add some oil to make sure that this machine, when we get it uh, completely lifted, the bucket completely lifted in the air, that it has enough oil to do its work. Now we're gonna hop up in the cab. Normally we would uh, go around to the other side of the machine, but it's convenient right now. Well, as we found on our inspection, this bottom step is, is bad. So I'm gonna skip that step on the way up. I'm also gonna set my clipboard down. 
up on top. I don't want to climb up with anything in my hands. I want to make sure that I always maintain three points of contact. Once I'm up on the top, I can pick my clipboard back up and go into the cab. Now what we're looking for here is all the gauges need to be functioning normally. All our lights need to be working, uh, both exterior and interior. We also want to take a look at all of our controls and make sure our controls all function normally. Something else that a lot of people forget about is our seat belt. This white tag has a date on it. Caterpillar recommends that you replace your seat belt every three years or five years from date of manufacture. So it's always a good idea to keep that in mind. Safety should be number one on all of our list. And lastly, something that a lot of people forget is the cab filter. This cab filter is located right here, easy to get to, easy to clean. It's also referenced in our operation and maintenance manual. For more information, you can either look at your operation and maintenance manual or contact your local cat dealer.